<laughs> no. Something is pink drops. Pink drops. I didn't mean it. Pink place. Pink Chan decides to DDoS me. <laughs> All right. When last left off, we had everyone out exploring the city, finding out that apparently there's a superhero in the area that so much so that they've gotten a fan base. Two of those fans are children of your employer, who you've reprimanded for obvious reasons. Then they gave you, Caitlin and you, Byroth, two... Well, they're not actually Hatch of Disguise, but they're known as uh, Gems of the Changeling, which are basically the same thing. They're just Damn. necklaces. In doing so, they've lost that power, but you know that they're able to manipulate their form in different ways. They just wanted to fit in, according to Realta's information that she gave you later on. Beyond that, however, it was also provided that they were apparent this Mighty Knight was apparently going off to the market to fight these weird snake and or metal armored beast thing in like an hour or so. So you had like 45 minutes to get there. Beyond that, however, you can also explore the city, go around about. You heard that the uh, lieutenant in the police force, not the research and development department, are actually looking for recruits to go off and find this vigilante to stop them and perhaps do something else. You don't know. Don't have the information for that. <laughs> While this is going on, Maria is going off collecting comic books. Surprisingly enough, getting more information than mostly anyone else. Yay, reading! Oh, and getting scanned by children. Yay, scam? Yay, bad money sense! But, As... but, it, was, <laughs> but it was gold well spent. As this occurred, Caitlin managed to retrieve the blade from Ramon. Uh, the reluctance, but ultimately acceptance by Roth. Thanks to the limitation set on it by the stone that it's currently attached to, and Caitlin doesn't know how to remove it, at least not yet. The forced entity that is currently housed within the blade isn't exactly able to manipulate you. Just speak with you at a lesser degree than it was intended. It seems catty. Very catty. It's, it's very, it's very judgmental. Yes. Although it's making Caitlyn <laughs> think her entire look. As this is going on, Ramon has no <laughs> idea who you're talking to, and we're starting off from there. <laughs> I just remember I said I'm an S. <laughs> yes. Um. Yes. Yes, you are. Um. Are you all right, Caitlyn? Yeah, I'm fine. I mean, yeah, I'll be alright. I mean, fine, such a... Let's call you a 7. Yeah, 7 Let's seems fair. Let's call me a 10. Oh, no, no, darling. With your style, your looks, and your posture, seven's the best you're gonna get. Oh, you're... Oh, see, now you're talking about my posture, disembodied voice. Um... Is everything alright? I, I think you're about a 2. A he one on a good day, maybe? Backs up a little. Uh, um, thank you. I'm gonna go do some work. Uh, you see? Scaring all the men away. Oh. <laughs> think it's men I'm after, Caitlin? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you think, you, oh, you think they're my target? Just you watch. I'm going out of the town. I'm gonna show you what for. Um, okay. The Claire then states, have fun. <laughs> As you head out to town. Yep. Do, 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 do. I think the rest of you are at school. Oops, wrong crowd. Right. I'm calling Evie. Okay. Does she answer her badge phone thing? Hello? Hey, Evie. Miss, what is it, Miss Caitlin? I need you. I need a. I need your help with something. I need a. <laughs> I'm being judged, and I and I think I need to know who your hairstylist is. 
Can I ask the context of who exactly is judging you? Just, you just need to know that they that they claim that with my style, posture, demeanor, voice, that I'm a simple seven. Seven's being a little appreciative of your current circumstances. You're still a one. Shut up. I'm sorry. I'm not quite. I'm oh, sorry. I'm oh, sorry. I wasn't talking to you. <laughs> sorry. That's me laughing out of character. <laughs> I'm not quite sure why you're referring to yourself and this other person as numbers, but... I don't know, thought you were like 107, or 100, 200 years ago. Uh, Can you please not listen in on our conversations? You're that old and you have yet to moisturize. <laughs> no wonder your skin's so pale and crackly. What? <laughs> Evie, where are you right now? Where at the school? I was about to head off with Maria, though. You hear Caitlin snap something? It's a pencil. Are you quite alright, Miss Caitlin? Who was your hairdresser, Evie? I mean, Miss Evie. Currently, they're in my home uh, land. Journey just for a hairstyle. I can try and find you the you best have anyone hairstylist. Closer? Uh, I'll then try and find you a, the most confident hairstylist we can. Okay. Very confused, on it. Afraid about what's happening. <laughs> Rauta probably is also confused. Um, tell her she's pretty. You can clearly tell that Rauta is speaking. It's not exactly mm. mind to mind. Maybe, uh, could probably ask Maria as well, if you'd like. Is Maria with you? Currently? She is right now. Okay, I gotta go. Click. I'll, I'll be there, I'll be there in five minutes. <laughs> okay. Click. Click. You head off. <laughs> Meanwhile, what are these two slash three doing? Four. Maria is currently off screen, but we can decide what they're doing. Leaving. Yep. That's what I'm... Evie and Maria are doing. Leaving. Yeah, yep. I'm following Maria. Mara is done with the school. For sure. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, then. Um, does anyone tell that to Caitlin? <laughs> <laughs> Did we even tell Kate and where we were? No. Well, you she knows you're at school because you <laughs> left earlier, but she has no idea where you're going now. Actually, only one of you know where exactly where you're going. <laughs> For fuck's sake! <laughs> Maria, wait. As I'm just trying to catch up to Maria who headed off before me. Uh, she's off screen, but she's there. Is going to say anything, or are we just going to assume that they ran off? What, are you talking to me? I said Maria, wait. What? You should stop. Off. I should have waited by the gates for you. Yeah, she was in there for a while. Seems like Miss Caitlin, uh... uh... What's the best way to describe this? Um... Desperately secure? Nervous about her current appearance. I'm not sure why she was talking about someone judging her, but I heard no voice on the other end. Would you perhaps, perhaps be willing to help her out with it? I'd rather not delay the day anymore, if that's okay. I mean, I didn't mean right now, I meant a further day. 
Well, that's right now. fine by me. I can. Spend them walking out of the Probably find a way of working to my schedule tomorrow. Evie just grabs uh, Maria's hand gently with both of her hands and just like, thank you very much for this. Are you guys following? <laughs> Said they were. I mean, yeah, oh. but if you're actually just going to go... Maria's not going to go anywhere if they're following. Oh, okay. Um, Maria gonna... will take four rights to see if anyone's following. If there's still the same person behind them, she's walking up to some guards. I would have said beforehand uh, that we like... were going off to do our own thing, so... Oh. Okay, um, Byroth, do you follow anyways? Hello? I hear you. Okay, does Byroth hear me, though? So what? Thing flashing up green, but I don't hear anything. Oh, that's great. Be back then, even if you can hear me. Get your fucking name. Okay, I'm back. Welcome back. Okay, it looks like Soap's connection died. Oh, he left. He's in the floor 20. Oh, wow. Right. Yep. Damn, who knew the hurricane hit in Florida would uh, affect Canada? <laughs> Practically right next to each other. Haha, uh, 20! <laughs> Since I don't know where Byroth is... She's gonna sit in the background for now. Oh, that's weird. I wonder why Maria's name doesn't show up. Mm. Whatever. Did it now. After taking a left, a left, a right, right, left, right, right, left. Almost forming a maze-like structure. You're fairly certain that they're not there. Beyond that, though, you can't be completely 100% certain. But more or less, they're gone. You underestimate Maria. <laughs> okay. Then you just keep wandering about until you actually accidentally wind up in the marketplace. You don't have to interact Maria's with Maria's going to simply look over food stalls, so... Whilst she waits. Okay. Then you guys are just at the food court area. There's a woman already there, currently buying and shopping supplies. Uh, hello there. You seem new. Oh, yes, hello there. Uh, what brings you by? I was simply just looking around, taking in the sights. Oh, um, if it's sites you want to see, check out, uh, the man over there, uh, pointing at the man with a literal bar, open air bar, uh, he could probably tell you some stories or show you where in town are the best sites. Um, there is a traveling merchant currently in the area too. Uh, he has some bees he managed to catch on his travels. I think that's what he called them. Bees? Uh, bees. Um, bees. you know, like, owl bears, um, giant ravenous rats. I think they're called dire rats. Um, but today he caught a giant, uh, looks like a cobra 
horse and the strange creature of iron and steel. Let's check that out later as I look to Maria. Just... He was probably quietly engaged in discussions on prices with different foods. Okay, uh, looking at the prices, they do seem a little inflated, like more so than they should be. Um, what's your passive perception? Uh, do, 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 20 something. Uh, 25. 25. 25. Um, quick question, Evie, are your wings currently out? Mm hmm. Alright, when you guys were getting closer to the area, it looked as if the stall merchant quickly did something with the prices you're not exactly sure what but from what you can tell he either changed the price tag or something else um no nah, you'd probably be able to figure it out uh maria you can tell that they raised the <laughs> prices once evie showed up <laughs> Maria's just gonna shake her head and bring up the fact that the all the prior weeks she's brought from this area, the prices were a lot lower than this. Uh, yeah. Each time you came, they seem to have raised up the prices a little bit more, one after the other after the other. I mean. A banana used to cost like 10 copper pieces. Now okay. it's like at one gold. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. And they inflated this every time Maria came over here? Uh, no, Maria, they've never increased the prices when you were here. But when Evie joined you, they've steadily increased the price. This is this would be the first time that Evie's been here with Maria. Oh, uh, then Maria would go shopping by herself on her days off. Oh, I always thought Evie would join you. Like, a nice walk, but okay. Um, you know that this is not the right price. If this is the first time, it'd be like one silver. a uh, two silver, sorry. Uh, versus the ten copper. The man goes, um, what can I say? These are the demands of the day. You know, you can always come back another time, another day. He's directly looking at you, Maria, not even paying attention to Evie. Like, deliberately not looking at her. No apologies, but I think we'll take our business elsewhere. Mm, your money. She turns to Evie. Are you ready? Are you not going to buy anything? Uh, not when they deem it necessary to try to overcharge. He then deliberately, once after finishing your conversation, almost doesn't even recognize Evie there as a person and moves over towards the next person. Ah, uh, yes, and how can I help you, miss? Oh, um, I'd like, um, one potato, one cabbage, and one of those apricots, please. Very well, that'll be 15 copper. Uh, are you sure the... Oh, yes, yes, um, a discounted price for you. Oh, um, thank you, I suppose. Mm hmm. Uh, then hands, she hands over some money. He makes a transaction. <laughs> um, she waves over at you guys saying bye and heads out. I wave back to her. Just. That's you as well. I'm still just stood there by the stall, just looking over at the man. He's not even. Um, how should I describe this? This is... A thousand yard stare. Yeah, a thousand yard stare. You're like that one kid that goes into a shop just to browse. You're not actually there to shop, so every one of the employees you... employees ignores you. Apologies if I seem quite brash with this. Wrong. 
I'm not going to take any offense if there is. I just simply would rather prefer no more than seemingly Nothing. If you wish, as she shrugs and just walks off. Okay. Um, Maria, I don't know how you can walk past yourself, but I assume you meant Evie. Yeah, brain tired. I mean, you decided not to actually sleep today, I'm assuming. Correct. <laughs> like every day. So smart. Um, Soap, are you able to speak now? It lit up, but did... There we go. The lagging. <laughs> I shall try to go and be your, and be your. He's too low. He's, his volume was too low. Speak again, so I'll breathe life into you. God, I'm good at translating. <laughs> he hasn't said anything yet. Hey, I'm translating it though. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, Can't argue with anything? that. <laughs> I can't argue with that, he is translating it to perfection. Ash. Ash, 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 ash. Um, Soap, if you can hear us, we can't hear you. Um, okay, so, as this continues on, um, Maria, you notice that the person doesn't change the prices, but they are weary of Eevee when they get closer. This person actually does pay attention to Eevee. Not in the same sense, oh, a shopper, a customer, welcome, welcome. More like, I have to keep an eye on this person in case they steal something. What oh, fucking asthma? What? Hey. I heard a hey. He said hey. Oh, oh, we got words. Little bit of there. Oh, <laughs> my lagging knees ain't that fluent. Uh, okay. Have you tried oh. turning it off and on again, sir? Uh huh. I, I honestly so think it's worth a shot. Now. Um, you know, progressively worse, honestly. Yeah, the internet. There we go. Hey, complain about it and it shall get better. <laughs> okay. Squeaky wheel. Have you been following or trying to follow Maria? You can tell uh, that... I just bailed on them. I'll go talk to the police commissioner about the superhero thing. Okay. Uh, Maria, you managed to walk into the area after finding out that Barat decided to ditch you guys. Or vice versa. Oh, they tried to ditch... Yeah. They ditched me. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, Maria, do you have anything at this uh, archery workshop? Uh, she's more just glancing over passing time. Okay. I mean, sort of a curious child's nature as to the equipment. Okay. You can tell that there are some silver tipped arrows, some magically magic feathered arrows as well, and then some standard arrows. Um, speaking over the person that is running the shop, does pay attention to you and um, she then simply states oh well the silver tip jar is there for any evil aligned or um demonic beast that you come across the magic quilled arrows are simply there to give you a little more oomph to your attack you can bind a spell into it however it only works once and it's only a level uh two or below spell you can infuse into it and you have to do it beforehand and it only has an hour longevity before the spell disperses from the object. 
And then if you're just looking to buy a few standard arrows, I also have some of those. As we move over to the commissioner's office. Oh wait, uh, the lieutenant's running this gambit, so... The police station. If I can find that dumb map. Oh, yeah, yeah. Maybe we can have 30 seconds of ping. Nope. <laughs> nope, you do not have those 30 seconds of okay. ping. Curses. Yep, indeed. Curses. Police station. Wait, that's not the police station. Station where the police stay. There we go. Uh, so, Lieutenant, I understand that you are looking for these smash in the line still. Did you hear that? Yes. Okay, just check it. As you enter into this police station. I'm not what was it? I show my bed. Okay. You enter in, greet the two people that. Sometimes you have to greet entering into this area. Uh, this is a different building than the research and development department, so you usually don't show up here. But you show them their badge, and they simply go, uh, right. Well, enter into the right door. Continue on where the mercenary group is at, and you'll be there. They'll call you in once they're ready. All right, then. Boop, boop, boop. Moving you. As you head towards the area, you do find a whole menagerie of people. Humans, orcs, drought, elves, um, some strange others, and the like. Some of the, most of the group is human, but not everyone is human. If you had to guess, some mercenaries have to be non-human races uh, due to the fact that sometimes they can't get jobs other than, you know, doing dangerous work. You know, murder. It doesn't always have to be murder, but usually is. <laughs> you know, I'm sure it's the, I'll go stand with some nonsense or something. I'll stand with the front. Okay, um, then I'll just change where your token is. Oh. 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 Barra, he's challenging you. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm just changing the angle of it. As you enter inside and view the area, you can see through a window that someone is talking to a tiefling. Um, the person sitting at the desk seems to have a lieutenant's badge on them. And the tiefling seems to be some sort of subservient person, maybe a slave, maybe an employee. Uh, it's hard to tell for Byron sometimes. I'll go knock on the door then, because I'm above these common mercenaries. True. Uh, you see the tiefling heading towards your area. They open the door, and you can see a captain's badge on them. Oh, wait, I think captain's higher than lieutenant. Yeah. Uh, wants sergeant. Sergeant, that's right. Oh no, yes. Captain's in the other room you can't see. Sergeant should have been her, honestly. Hmm. Ah, whatever. And the, you can tell that she's below the lieutenant, but higher than you. Uh, I'll flash to the bad and say I understand uh, the lieutenant is in charge of the tax force with the uh, charge to Captain Galantes and by the information. Well, hopefully, productive. Yes, um, if you're here for the job, it will be proceeding in about two more minutes if you want to uh, wait with the rest. The information I have is uh, a little more sensitive. Um, alright. 
I can give you the information now, but if you're not gonna work with the rest of the mercenaries, that's up to you. No, I have information to give you. Oh, um, please come in then. Uh, she opens the door and then heads over. Because you're not exactly a quiet person. The it's lieutenant fine. already knows why you're there. I hear you have information for us. Make sure the door is closed and uh, 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 uh I recently come to know that uh, the vigilantes have been inspiring copycats, especially at least amongst the students of the academy, and more specifically, well, two of our own. I understand. Um... Ramon's children, in fact. Now, I talk to them, but I can't guarantee that they won't be out there imitating these vigilantes. I'll have to take a look out for them, then. But beyond that, we have most of this information. Other than a few identities, we were going to state that there have been new growing fads going about where those with power, those with magical abilities, especially among the non-human races, have been growing in number due to the fact of this mighty knight growing in popularity. As such, they've been copycats going out there and getting into danger and getting themselves nearly uh, killed. This is true. And I will lay uh, the amulet of the changeling on the table. In fact, some of them employ disguising methods such as this. She moves forward. Do you allow her to pick it up? She picks it up. That's interesting. Unless you go through the your, the police department, you're likely not able to acquire any magical amulets or the like. Certainly not of this quality or power. Can you elaborate where you found it? The Academy of Children of Ramon. They willingly uh, gave them up without even asking. That's good. They're good but... children, but misguided. I don't want them hurt when your mercenaries out there go out looking for them. I'll have to keep them informed. Our main issue is Mighty Knight. Stop him. We can likely cut off the, be the beast's head. However, if someone was able to acquire these without an issue, let alone students, this does pose a threat. Magic is supposed to be regulated here. Only attributed those to our who are deemed capable of wielding it. That's why we nurture the young, the old, and whoever we can find in the school. If someone's just selling these on a whim, let alone in this mass quantity as you elaborated, this could pose a threat, let alone could indicate an organization. I agree, and I think the Academy needs more oversight. If children can get their hands on this and use it without the professor's knowledge, this is not a place of training. Run amok. I might have to get the Queen's Guard involved in this then. Alright, thank you for letting me know. If there's anything else, I, I can, can provide you with the documents we're about to distribute out. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes, and I put my hand out for the amulet as well. Uh, all right, then. Keep this in mind. Um, the tiefling then looks at it and then takes out a red slab tablet and takes a takes a weird flashlight. Not a flashlight. A strange light emits from the tablet. And then she nods to the lieutenant and then she hands it back to you. Do you require anything else for the analysis? Uh, no, everything we've acquired has already been analyzed. And we have evidence in record now. Uh, 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 I've the Thank you for your time. Alright then. Uh, just, do you continue to wait with the rest of the mercenaries or do you just head out? Because she can give you the pamphlet of information she's about to hand out. So you don't have to actually interact with any of them. I'll take the pamphlet, but I'll just listen to what she has to say, just to make sure that 
there's the part about not harming the kids. Okay. Um, but before that, we move over to the school again. <laughs> Aiden runs in. I need a fucking hairdress! <laughs> <laughs> You guys are going to still be there because I forgot to leave your tokens. Of course. <laughs> she is there as well. There we go. Demon Caitlin, activate. Fire off the snitch. Fire off is trying to keep those kids from getting murdered by Mercy. Snitch is going to get stitches. Caitlin, you head into the area where you've know what your team, your companions, the people would tell you where they are. <coughs> uh, I, I wasn't playing anything. But you don't see them. I am going to ask somebody where they last were. I'm not taking off the demon armor. <laughs> yep, this is my target. Okay, you head over to what appears to be a faculty member. Uh, excuse me, miss. Can I help you with something? Where is the short one and the other short one? <laughs> They're both female. <laughs> that is um, the best description I could give you. I'm afraid... One half giant. One half giant what? Wings. Oh, okay. I don't think her wings are showing, though. No. Her wings are always showing. Unless she has... Mm -hmm. she has wings. Um, I'm afraid you're going to be a little more descriptive. There are many people here <laughs> with various attributes about them. Caitlin pulls out the fucking axe and she talks like this. <laughs> 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 she, uh... She talks in, a, in an accent I cannot replicate it with, at this time. Okay, um, you s do it in game so you don't have to do it out game. Oh, um, that person left mo um quite a while ago actually. I did say to you I was heading out with Maria. <laughs> I want to go home. Oh, um. <laughs> Well, classes are ending soon, unless you're here for the armory class. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, um, nothing at all. <laughs> Bye. Uh, goodbye. I'm gonna go commit sewer slide. So you're heading to the slums? I'm headed. I'm heading to buy my. I'm gonna go buy a pearl so I can drown myself in magic. You no, know you could just, just like tap your badge and be like, "Hey, where are you guys?" I could, but that's too easy. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go get the pearl so I can cast identify, and I need um, charcoal, incense, and herbs, and a fire for a brazier. I'm gonna go to buy those things. Oops. It looks mixy. Yeah, I always thought Mixy would be <laughs> here. I honestly always thought Mixy Sorry, would dude. be here. My bad. Mixy disappears. Come on. <laughs> Holy shit, so far. Doop. Oh, Caitlin, you don't want Byroth identifying all your stuff anymore. Caitlin, you can flip yourself. Caitlin will go into this area like this. Okay. Entering inside, you do see a merchant there. Wary of you, but hey, you're here to shop. Oh, welcome. Yeah. Um, what can I help you with, miss? A nice dagger? A nice love letter um, set? Oh, you seem like someone that has various um, suitors coming after you. Am I right? Oh, I, of course I'm right. You hear a pfft in your head. Caitlin is trying to smile politely. So, miss, a, how can I help you? I'm here to acquire a pearl for a significant other. 
Oh, oh, of course, of course. Um, she then heads over towards the... Well, from what you can tell, she's literally going into a bag of marbles. But they're all valuable gems. So, miss, um, what kind? Uh, I'm looking for a pearl. Oh, of course. She then takes out ten types of pearls. Or at least ten of different sizes and colors. We have a red one. We have a lovely purple one. Oh, but pink. Pink might just go well with your eyes. Okay, Liz is going to have to accept that she's telling the truth on that one. <laughs> we also have the standard white, if that's what you're interested in. It can't be the classics. You seem like someone with high refine refinement to you. Hmm. Yes, I'm sure of it. You hear more scoffing in your head. This is more and more fucking self-deprecation. She's got the fucking lost sword telling her she looks <laughs> ugly. And this sword is laughing at me. <laughs> Kayla's trying to keep up a light and dignified manner, but she, 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 she's gonna look upset soon. Yeah, you can tell that she doesn't really deal with customers that often based on how she's talking. So she's really flattering you just to try to get you to buy something. But it's up to you if it's working well or not. Listen, I'm, when in doubt, flirt a dogma, and so I'm gonna do that. It's going to be fang deep in the slavery breeze. <laughs> I want that discount bike. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go up to her, right? Mm hmm So my objective is to get her to, like, take a step backwards onto, onto this right here, onto this table. Roll persuasion. Yay. <laughs> I'm good at those. I swear. Oh, that's pretty good. Like, even without the bonus of the blade, it's still incredible. Yep. Examine how she moves, how you operate your own body. You pivot where she turns and she accidentally hits the table, causing her to be in a more pragmatic position than she'd like. Or she's yep. into it. You can't tell. You can't actually see her face. Cannot. <laughs> but you can feel some sort of warmth about you. You're a lot closer than you probably thought. Uh, <laughs> what if the pearl in my eyes isn't isn't in that little bag of yours? Oh, um, <laughs> I'm flattered, but maybe we can do this... <clears throat> After work, I get out in like two hours. I'll see you in two hours then. But I am also here to buy a pearl. <laughs> so. Oh, um, if that's what you like, I can give you this pearl for a discount. Say 80 gold. Uh, the standard gold of pearl that she currently has in her hand is 100 gold. pleasure doing business with you i give her 90 gold no i give her 100 gold oh <laughs> um she pockets the other 20 um for our date later on pleasure doing business with you see you in two hours she blushes but you can't tell in caitlin's head i'm gonna say to the sword that's how you seduce somebody you shit oh we yes <laughs> fucking bad throne. I need a fucking head. <laughs> the sword that was in her head. Back. That the was in her head. A dog bark. Not allowed. By what were you gonna say? Oh, sorry. I was just gonna say the sword says back. The only reason she didn't notice because there's that big fire. And her cold body wasn't <laughs> noticed. Interesting way of doing that. But what the sword really states in Caitlin's mind. Listen. Oh, congratulations! You picked up someone of great quality! 
I'm sure you can see how magnificent of a score you did. Oh, I'm sure you'll make a beautiful couple. You can clearly tell they're chastising you. A fucking dick move. <laughs> I hate you. I'm going to say I'm back sure to the story in can... Caitlyn's... <laughs> I'm going to say in, Cait in Caitlyn's mind, she's going to say back to the sword. Oh, why don't you tell me about your list of conquests? Oh, wait, it's at zero. <laughs> oh, I have had many wielders. You're not sure if that's Inu Inu or not, but it's creepy. None like me. Oh, when I get out the door, I'm going to put on my demonic armor. Okay, as you head out in your demonic armor, I've certainly had better. Yeah, say that with the iron stone out of you. <laughs> you can try. They don't say that, but I'm saying that. Next, next thing on the list of, of things that Caitlin's going to be trying to get throughout this day okay. is a brazier. Okay, that's heading further into town then. Um, but in the distance, Maria, you can see Caitlin just heading out further north. Okay. I don't think Evie has past perception <laughs> so high, so you probably can't. No. <laughs> I have shit past it. Okay. Heading back, um, you're still looking at the arrows, the merchant goes, so, um, anything you like? Or you just browsing? Either way, it's fine. Perfectly fine. Um, how would one go about learning how to use such a tool? Well, well if you like, I can recommend you to the school and you can take some archery classes there. Oops, sorry. Oh, it was the classes, huh? <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Sorry. As Byros summons some zombies. Not rip. Unfortunately, I don't have much in terms of time to learn, but I will look into that. Thank you. Oh, well, you can simply do it on your day to day. It doesn't really take much time, and as long as you pay the tuition and go at night, I'm sure you can take some night classes. Once you've made enough progress, you'll be able to use it, I'm sure. Um, end of game, this is me telling you, if you pay for the classes and then once you level up, you can take the feat that gives you proficiency with the weapon. Okay. But again, you are part of Section 9, so you can do that anyways without paying the fee. I've told you this multiple times. Yeah. But up to you. Maru will simply thank her and excuse herself, sort of thank you for your time, and go wander around the other stalls. Okay. Um, She still looks at Evie a little more than you like, probably, and then speaks with Evie. Is there anything you'd like, miss? Do you by any chance uh, sell crossbow bolts with the silver? Yes, we Is can have that ready for you. How much would 10 cost, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, a simple 10 will cost you, let's say, 3 gold. I uh, go into my person pull out free gold okay at a game i think 30 is 10 gold so i was just trying to do quick math it's fine which i don't think i did right so if she just gives you 10 silver tipped crossbow arrows it's a pleasure doing business with you and she gives like a proper curtsy and heads off with uh mario she nods not ever Keeping eye off of you, which is hard to do, but she nods. It just looks weird. Okay. Um. It's been about enough time. So as you guys wonder about, um, is there a specific stall you're hitting next? Uh, Moon is curious about the beasts, so. That is I'm a chronic the... then.
as you head over to the area, you see the man look towards you. Um, he seems to be a ranger class sort. He does have various wears, tears on his body, mainly his armor. Uh, you can tell that he is a trained combatant as well as a trained archer. These creatures seem to have been hindered by something, but clearly not by the weapon he currently possesses on him. He looks towards you and goes, Ah, you're here to purchase the beast, perhaps? Let's say uh, 300 gold per. What do you say, miss? Maria is looking like a curious child, but sort of jumping back at every slight shift they make. And she's just going to inquire as to what they are. All right. She's never seen a creature such as these. Aha! So, you're new in town, I see. Hmm, a bit of a rebel. A bit of a nobody who can't do wrong, but seems to try to find their adventure in life, I see. You're not sure if he's talking to you, Maria, or you, Evie. He just seems to be talking to the crowd. As if, um, he, basically he's like a snake oil salesman. Um, trying to see who takes the bait. Potentially Maria. <laughs> Dropkick translate. Draft gets muted. Big rip. That's a different dialect of Lagonese called uh, <laughs> Black Thai. <laughs> I don't speak that. I speak. I only speak Lagonese. It's only true. Fuck up the snails with snake oil. Yeah, you... we even it never comes up in session. What's going on? <laughs> uh, yeah, you guys could try to do zone of truth. Is that like I have that spell prepared? <laughs> no, no, I'll, I'll be inciting him the entire time. I should probably roll for that. Yeah, go ahead. Um, but as that's going on, he looks towards Evie because she seems Ugh. the most best dressed out of both of you. Not saying that the Maria is badly dressed, but not as nicely. For other yes, reasons. Evie's dressed richly. <laughs> yes. Um. So looking towards Evie, she he then states. Well, miss, what about you? Seem to be out for adventure. These guys, these guys can be tamed. They can be your pets. You can ride them. See, see how you can be, um, he snaps his fingers. The ire, the envy of your friends. Think about it. He then stares at the sky posing. Uh, just look side to side. <laughs> While this is going on, Maria, you can tell that the creatures are moving slightly. It's weird. It's as if they're in a stasis, but slowly and surely they're moving. Uh, the man doesn't seem to actually notice this. With your passive perception again, though, because it's crazy high, you can tell that the wear, the tear, this little cuts and bruises he has on him, their makeup. They've been sheared and all that other stuff. He has been posed there to look like someone who has seen adventure. Even with your inside of 12, your past perception can tell all this. And you're not exactly sure if he's the exact same person he's pretending to be. That being said, you're not sure if he's also truthful or not. You did roll a 12. Yep. But you can I tell that... Yeah, sure, go ahead. But you can tell that his entire look is made up, at the very least. Who knows, maybe he's trying I to cry. look this way to attract more people? But Evie, you can tell he's lying. He has never seen combat. He appears, from what you can tell, has calluses on his hands, but not in the right places. Um, it's weird, but you can tell that they have, well, Eevee's classically trained, so you can tell that there are calluses that are formed when you perform 
with an instrument over time, this guy might be a bard rather than an actual ranger. So he's trying to woo you without actually being who he is. That being said, these creatures, at this point now, you can see that they're moving. Um, the guy seems to be sweating while still looking at the sun. He didn't expect this from what you can see. <laughs> uh, so, uh, miss. Or you, miss. What do you say? 300 gold? Or, um, how about this? 500 gold and you can take the whole cart. I just kind of like, give him the look of like... <laughs> Acknowledging and sort of like not trying to be judgmental, but it's kind of hard at the same time. You know how to properly take care of these creatures, sir. Not <laughs> being rude. Oh yes, of course, miss. I am a classically trained ranger. I've explored, dug deep, reached the highest cliffs in the ever-changing um, Razor's Edge Mountains. I've gone to the deepest steps of the Scar of the Sea. I've even explored the very night of the high city forest of the Great Lands. Mm -hmm. uh, Evie, you would know any stranger or newcomer that actually went towards the Razor's Edge Mountains. Especially if they actually climbed the thing. This guy is not one of those people. That's funny, I just so happened to be from there. Sweats more. <laughs> oh, um... And you can clearly know you clearly know my name, although I try not to spread it around too much. I still want to explore, wander around. You know, I don't want to be too mobbed with people. Keep it hush hushed. Uh, excuse me, sir. Sorry to interrupt, but the, does that mean the horses and the cart are for sale? You then see the snake Basilis hits the cage. He's now able to fully move. He said, he freaks out, steps forward. Uh, -huh, uh yes. Tell you what, you caught me in a good mood. 450 and the entire cart, including the horses, are yours. You, send, uh, you then see the metallic, from what you can tell, dog, then hits the cage. Uh, 50 sounds like a fair deal to me. And she'll hand him 50 copper pieces. Because he didn't specify currency and it's now a binding con transaction. <laughs> I try and walk over to the two beasts and try and calm them down. Not like putting hands through the cage, but just... Okay. Sort of uh, shit. <coughs> Mary? Oh, you wieners for splitting the team. <laughs> this is such a buy us. It really is. Uh, Maria, you hand him the money. He looks distraught as Evie then goes over to the area. Um, go ahead and roll animal... Oh, yeah. Animal handling. Let me roll something... You're not going to see if it's modifier. Oh, it just one by one. It then hits the cage, causing it to collapse with its own structure. Wait. He goes, oh, you've got a deal. Goodbye. I really don't like people that try and pretend to be something that they're not. As you say that, the other cage then breaks due to the weight constraint. And now the there other is. cage is also free gonna grab Evie and pull it to the side and simply say, I think we should wait for the guards. You're the police! Call for backup! As we... Uh, go, on. go to the police station, actually. You don't actually have to, like, do the whole speech thing. I just wanted to make sure that the lieutenant about making sure the kids aren't harmed. No, no, I'm not going to go through a whole speech. I'm just going to give you the rundown. <laughs> That's what, the crap. what? Oh, you've just noticed. I've been tabbed out for a while. <laughs> yeah. Entering to the area, she then elaborates the basic details of what's going on. I'm not going to play this out because you don't want to. Which is fine. It's just going to take a more time. Basically, she gives you the rundown. Right now, they're looking for the person known as Mighty Light. Alias is given to him by the populace in the city. 
Current whereabouts unknown. Current true name unknown. Goes about the area in a figure dressed garb similar to this make and model. She then presents you uh, with an image. Will now be overlaid by her own image. Uh, to her left. She takes out a basically... What are they called again? Uh, wanted Dead or Alive poster. And then she then continues on and hands each of you a pamphlet note, which then states, uh, Wanted Dead or Alive, but mostly alive. I will, uh, then continues on. The bounty for his head is currently set at 3,000 gold. You do and can tell in the notes that they it is a private contract, so someone is trying to find and get rid of him from the city. You can also tell that no one's really sure of his abilities, but he does wield two blades at his back. Beyond that, he does seem to be cognizant of the goings around town. Uh, the bad things that are going around town, so it's possible, based off of the notes that the police got in, he might be causing these events. At least this is their current assumption. Either that or someone's trying to draw him out through this. And seeing as there have been posers going through this and doing some of these things as well, they don't want other people getting hurt. So they're trying to cut the snake's head off before the body can coil around the city. Basically, it's a hunting mission. Finding him or not, it's up to you. Any other information you can find or locate, it is up to you. You can join teams or not. You can split the money or not. This is your assigned mission if you choose to take it or not. Ultimately, it's an open contract, so anyone that decides to take it first has to meet her or collaborate with another member that has already gotten the pamphlet or file. She then gives you the rundown information of what some people might be using to change themselves, which you just now gave her. Um, she then states not to harm any of these people, but to bring them down on violently. And bring them in for any interrogation. Not any interrogation means. Uh, bring them in for interrogation, seeing if any of them might know where he currently resides. She then states, are there any questions? There are no questions, Fire Rocko stated. Some of the people uh, that are uh, using these disguise methods are children. Anyone who harms a child in this city answers to me. That would intimidate, I guess. Thaumaturgy mm -hmm. to make it super scary. You do so, and then the fox woman at the top then states, uh, Yes, you and the Blue King were all aware. Um, she kind of plays you as if you really don't matter, but more as the Blue King. This is one of his rules. You're not really familiar with the Blue King, so you don't really know what's exactly going on or what she means by that. But everyone nods Makes in agreement. You respect the Blue King a little bit more. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know the whole that. speech with him. Anyone founding to harm many children in his territory are to be murdered and executed on the spot. So I suggest you don't go into his territory. The orc Goliath, uh, because he is eight feet tall, then goes and looks towards you. Yes. Uh, we may be mercenaries, but we're not exactly murderers. We'd rather not kill any children. There's a difference between rather not and will not. We'll keep an eye out, but this is a city filled with strangers. We're not exactly sure who exactly is everyone. In this city, you be sure before you kill someone. The lieutenant then speaks up. Yes, you are correct. There will be a penalty, and while you are theoretically working for the police, you are not exactly police officers, other than a few selected members of you in this squad. So do not take your own authority 
as if it is ours as well. Bring them in, don't take them out. Unless it's the one you're sent out to acquire, then I will look the other way for him. Beyond that, do your jobs and do them well. If there's no further questions, you then hear the fox woman to... Well, she doesn't seem like a woman, more as if she just became of age, like 18 or something like that. Um, she then goes, uh, yes, um, so we can work in pairs and collaborate with this. Um, yes. Oh, um, great. And, um, do you have any more information on where we can find him? I'm afraid not. That is up to you and any people you decide to bring into this. Oh, um, okay. So, do we head out now? Um, if there's no further questions. Great! You then... I'll actually show them the necklace that the kids were using. And be like, anyone wearing a necklace like this is likely to be discarded. But that is not the only way. You then hear the one underneath her go, uh, okay. Oh, uh, great, great. Good to know. Good to know. Uh, you then see the person above you accidentally bump into you. Uh, excuse me. The next person I then moves over as well. <laughs> That's Mighty Knight right there. Bad cash money. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever bumped into me, I gotta, like, check all my... Like, hat, where's my wallet? I got everything. Um, okay. You pat your wallet, look around yourself. Um, do you still have the necklace in your hand? Because I assume yeah. you check for that as well. Um, you see and notice that it's gone. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I yell, Thief! Seriously inside police station? <laughs> yeah, thief! How dare you! As these two head out as well. Well, we gotta go. <laughs> uh, Perception. Sure. As the rest of the groups head out as well. Um, you can catch Please, these two if you inside want. Inside the police station. That's gonna be a big blow to his fucking 18. Where do I think it went? You're not really sure. All these people seem to be well trained. It was either the people that bumped into you or the people that just left at the side door. It could be any of these people. But based on the way that these two people were speaking with you so nicely, it might be them trying to distract you. Or it could be the people that bumped into you and did a sleight of hand. 50-50 at this point, you don't really know who they are. Fire off the point at the lieutenant and be like, Lieutenant, the fox lady is suspect. I'm going to go after these guys. Um, oh, that's a fucking racist statement if I've ever heard one. Okay. Uh, the lieutenant then heads towards the fox woman as you head towards no, the sorry. door. No, sorry. I thought it was the fox lady who left. I thought they were speaking. No, no, no. Yes, yes. However, you didn't specify when you ran out, so she's going to go with the one she can actually find. Just a fox lady, like other fox ladies don't exist. Billy. But uh, he's just gonna want to catch a bumpy boy over. Okay. Um, you head over to the people and they look at you curiously. The man goes, "Can I help you with something?" <clears throat> Uh, I think to the one who bumped in. I uh, take the necklace right out of my hand. Is the woman raises her hand. Um, I thought I apologized for that, and no. Inside, how do I believe her? Uh, Inside. up to you. Sixteen. You don't seem to feel like she's lying. Mm -hmm. Then I'll do my fear ball, and just to be sure, I'll do my fear ball daily detect magic, the racial thing, and see if I recognize that particular brand of magic on her. Okay. 
Um, you can detect that there's a sense of magic about her, but not the magic that you're trying to zone into. Um, she has something known as a Hexblade Curse upon her. I'll just go, shit. Wonder who did that. <laughs> <laughs> Looks to Caitlyn. <laughs> because Ufakis. And then I'll just like immediately dip back through the room, see that she, the lieutenant is... No, the other fox lady. I was unaware of the, the talkative one. Um, she was speaking. And then the... Uh, sergeant heads in after trying to find and locate the other one because they split up the job. She goes, I'm afraid I didn't find her. She seems to be rather quick on her feet. And now she has an amulet of polymorph. Oh. Disguise. I'm sorry. If you want, I can print you out a copy of the picture I took. It's not that. She's clearly beyond trust you to now can possess such a thing. Uh, that is did a you uh, did you take down her name credential? Um we took down the aliases they use. Often mercenaries don't exactly use their real names in case Well, we are police. Do you seriously not employ zones zones of truth while you do this stuff? We employ it when we ask the questions on how they're willing to work, who they're willing to work with, are they willing to kill, murder, and the like, but we still allow them their safety nets in case something were to happen. After all, we are putting them in the line of danger. Trust the person to kill in your name and you don't even ask what theirs is. This is crazy. The lieutenant then states, we're not allowing them to kill. One of the questions we asked was, are you willing to kill? Most of them said yes, but we told them no. Do you agree to this? Most of them said yes, and three people failed, so we kicked them out. Those two said they weren't willing to kill, and yes, they agreed to not kill. Although we will put out an APB on who they go by and their current images. Uh, Sergeant, please put out an APB for Cyber Fox and Raging Rabbit. Uh, right. <laughs> uh, feels really dumb that he got grifted by two people called Cyber Fox and Raging Rabbit. Yeah. Uh, really should. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you make any... I like how you're... Good. I, hmm? I do have to say I like how you're just saying this is a police station, yet you have to be reminded that one of the police officers that worked with you was a literal ex-assassin, and the other was like fucking another rogue or something. Yeah, but that was Section 9. This is like the legit police. We're like SWAT team, whatever. The freaks. Feels bad. Yep. Yep. Looks like look hey, look! This is the sick folder alive. Deleted. Deleted. <laughs> Deleted. 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 Veganus Thoticus. No, I'm, gonna appear in my, I'm gonna appear in this form now. Uh. Yeah, that was my old token too. I was that. This place looks familiar. I've been here before. Uh, uh, that's why most of the tokens were still here. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I cleared it last time, but nope. You head towards the area that you were heading out to do. Heading up north, you encounter the shop where you've been here before. The woman up front then goes, Oh, uh, welcome back. It's been a while. Yeah. Uh, so, can I? How you been? You both speak at the same time. It's clearly awkward. You don't remember her name, and she probably doesn't remember <laughs> yours. Oh, I've been rather good. Can I help you with something? What's my first name? No, just kidding. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm here to inquire about an item on my shopping list. Oh, um, what kind? Well, uh, she takes out a, uh, she summons a shadowy book. I'm going to need charcoal, incense, herbs, and these need to be consumed by f- in a fire by a brazier made of burn. Oh, that's easily done. Uh, Mera, I uh, then see the woman with goggles bring over a sack filled with that stuff. Because as you were talking, she went around and collected the stuff you just asked for. Um, Mara, can you hand her the items? Uh, sure. Here you go. Uh, that'll be about ten gold. Yeah, I hand them ten gold because I can't remember. I hand, I hand them twenty gold because I can't remember her name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, there's no need to tip so highly. I mean, if you'd like. We're good friends, aren't we? Sweats. You can tell she might not know who you are. <laughs> uh, sure. You don't sound so sure when you said that, did you, friend? <laughs> um. Mm, anything else? Don't tell me you forgot my name. At a game, I'm pretty sure you guys never asked for her name. But anyways. Uh, I know I know that they just said their names. <laughs> yeah, they did. It was like an offhanded thing. It honestly doesn't matter. I just wanted you to uh, feel awkward. Because this isn't your entire situation because you have the blade. Um, yeah. She then states, so, um, anything else? You then hear in your I'm head, a ah, bit of makeup here and there. Let's see what we can do with that bus line and hip line. Do you have anything that can help her you can clearly tell she can't hear the voice in your head you know what i'll humor you just this once okay um sure i need i need makeup what else did, i'm gonna ask everything he asked okay <laughs> basically you get a disguise kit okay I'm good at those. All right. Uh, The other person, whose name you also don't remember, then hands you a disguise kit, which is pretty much just a makeup kit. uh, Only with, like, putties and stuff. I'd really love for right now to wear Caitlyn's badge to thing on and just fire off going, Caitlyn, my my necklace of disguise was stolen. Thing that made a perfect disguise over anyone changing their appearance perfectly was stolen from. <laughs> That's a bit well, specific, Fire Off. I already knew what it did. Well, I was there, you know. <laughs> but well, it appears I should. Mo- it appears I should mosey on along now. Goodbye. Um. Okay. Uh, that'll be thirty gold as you run out the door. I leave. <laughs> <laughs> I. I leave and, 30 gold on the table. Okay. You just shotgun it to the side as it falls to the floor. And you head out. Uh, yeah. Um, come again. Um, I leave 40. Mixie. I come back inside. <laughs> she says it underneath her breath so you fuck? can't hear it. Okay. It was basically, come again, um, Mixie. Basically, her questioning if she knew your name or not. I answered Byros' phone call. Okay, you're basically a couple of yards out dead the door. You know, the one identical to the one you had? Yes, Byros. It was stolen, and by a, well, someone technically employee of the police. It was very confusing. I think we should group up again deal with this vigilante problem. In the distance, you hear, alright, I have an APB out for Cyberfox and Silent Rabbit? Um... Cyber. Or was it Silent? No, it was Raging Rabbit. I just wanted to know if Byroth would remember and shout it out. Nope, he didn't. Oh, okay. (laughs) Um, Said something wrong. (laughs) (laughs) No, I wanted it to be dumb. So Caitlin knew that you got punked by these two people. 
Um, but someone in the background says that raging rabbit name. <laughs> Bar, I think it's time for you to retire. Um, those names are stupid. You got defeated by two people of low intelligence. Byroth deliberately mishears to you and he says, Names are stupid. Fiat Fargo don't even have them. Stupid idea. Anyway, okay, Byroth. Uh, I really would just like Caitlin to just go, maybe I'm seeing why exactly how they got the upper hand on me. I'm, I'm definitely <laughs> seeing I'm definitely seeing how it connects to each other. Or would you like to meet up with me? Um, uh, I'm in the police station now. Uh, better is most convenient for you. Hey, you how's have it going? Magic horse and can play. Hold up. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that hold up was in character. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, they're so just what two, is it, Caitlin? They're just two people walking by. He didn't give you actual descriptors. I can't. I'm on my horse. I can't feel them regardless. I I, I heard people walking, so I said, "Hold up." You oh. purposely made him hear like Cyber Rabbit in the background, and what was the other name? Uh, Raging it, Rabbit. Cyber Fox. Raging, Raging Rabbit. Rabbit. Cyber Fox. So if there's a rabbit and fox looking motherfucker. He can't see. Yeah, let me just go out about looks real quick. <laughs> Byron. Your your tough vision. You have tough I'm vision. on my horse, Byron. I can't threes. But No, I mean my horse can see, but he's looking, you know, not that direction. He's about we're about to Yeah. Kill him blind. I'm blind, cuz <laughs> you say the they basically walk past they were very innocent. <laughs> they were... I went after the wrong people. It was Byron. one of them was a I, I mute the call. <laughs> I really screwed <laughs> I need to talk to these people. Okay, um, basically, they stop, but they go, um, can we hurry? We're kind of in a hurry. How many of you are standing over there? Um, metaphorically or literally, two. Have you ever have you heard about two people called Raging Rabbit and Cyber Fox? Oh, um, yes. I hear there are two people working for the police at the moment, heading out and exploring the area. In fact, I saw them heading towards a merchant shop not too long ago. So proud uh, of these fucking kids. <laughs> they take them after mixing. I've got just a real insight. I have disadvantage on insight. No, advantage on insight. Yay for being blind. Thank God I'm blind. You can tell that all the, what they said is the truth. But it's like weird. They're like mumbling something. So you're not exactly sure if you can trust them, but you do know that they're telling the truth. Maximilian, <laughs> to, to the uh, <laughs> to the market square. You got a twenty-three, man. They're telling the truth, but they're telling half truths. That's like your thing. He's blind. <laughs> what do you, you want me to get off this horse real quick and just be like, hmm? Let me feel your face. I mean, they. Let me touch your skin. I, well, I don't know. You've been pretty horny lately. <laughs> but they sound too young for her. Let us just start saying the alarm right now. <laughs> okay. We're going to cut it off there as you head towards the marketplace. The other two enter inside. Um, off screen, you basically hear this as you run out. Oh, um, is... Oh, man, I forgot their friend's name. Eh, it doesn't matter. Um, is Mary home? We need to give her these necklaces back. Oh, um, are you two her friends? Um, yeah. Oh, well, I can give them to her if you'd like. Oh, okay. Um, thanks. Say hi to Mary for us. Uh, sure. Huh. Nice kids. Uh... But you're long gone at this point. 
Yep, she's like at off. this point, this point. Yep, she yep, yep, she's gone. She's doing once you didn't hear necklaces. Do, 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 do. Now marketplace again. Wee. Let's see, Red King hideout, Blue King whereabouts, Police Station, Haven Shopping Center. I did say that I put in a call to Evie saying essentially the same thing I said to uh, <coughs> Caitlin there. Okay. Um, Evie, you get a call as soon as the cages break. I'm going to really drug Evie back to where she is, by the way. I am busy right now, bar off. <laughs> as I get dragged back. As I hang up the phone. You can just hear, like, snarls in the background. Like, oh. Yeah. Um, I just want to go on my fucking date. God damn it. <laughs> Maria, Evie, go ahead and roll turn order. He's going to do me one much. Just shit out of some snacks. Just... Why did you shit out of some Oh, and I thought they rolled well. My spears. Oh, you. Oh, I will fucking throw this phone into the river if I have to. It's a bitch. <laughs> it's really important. <laughs> I got humiliated by two terribly stupid named people. <laughs> Out of game, I am terrible with a name, so they were gonna have bad names to begin with. Anyways. Evie, your turn first. Where's Byra the team? I'm gonna look around and see if there's any guards around, but I'm also gonna tell people to people that they should just get to a safe place. There's not really too many guards in the market. Um mainly because some people don't really like them here. Uh, case in point, so they can, like, jack up the prices when certain people come in the area. Um, not protect people that are being bullied because they look different, are different, etc, etc. Remember, Haven is a haven for humans. So, if the police don't see the crime, how can they possibly know that it happened? There the is more a you know. There is a policeman roughly 100 yards out, though. You can yell, but it'll take them two turns to get here. I'm just going to yell to him that there's an emergency. I would also yell to the people that they should as soon as possible. And I am meanwhile, pulling out my spear. <laughs> meanwhile, a member of the special forces of the police dings your badge again and says, Is something wrong? I'm throwing my fucking badge away if you're gonna keep calling me, hanging up. You hear a click. <laughs> Clearly something's up, but you don't exactly theoretically know where they're at. You just hear a lot of I'll hissing. I'll stay in the police station and see if any of these fucking haggard cops call in on APB or whatever. Okay. Um, anything else, Evie? Well, I didn't swear in character. <laughs> that was me being. I assumed. But, but she just takes out her spear, but she's just. She's reading herself more than anything. Okay. If they. Arrow her. As you hold your action, you um, hear in the distance someone speaking to their badge. You don't really know what their badge icon is, but they report in. Uh, you hear through your badge. And then Byroth hears through Hitch's badge, and then through the police uh, station, you hear, I have an APB out here for two rogue creatures, a behemoth and what appears to be a basculus. Please report as soon as possible. I need backup out here. Marketplace, Town Square, 30 miles, not 30 miles, that is too big of a city. <laughs> Three miles in. Byroth will call Caitlin and uh, tell her to meet him there. Uh, Caitlin overheard this as well. It's an APB out through the entire system. Alright. 
it's up to her if she wants to go. So you call her and... I'm already headed her. to the market square. Yeah, that's true. But you don't know when you arrive. The next creature then enters into the area. As this man tries to run away, it pounces on the cabbages, the apples, the pears, and just crushes them into a paste. <laughs> I didn't mean to make that joke. Shut up. It then aims Ted's... My cabbages! <laughs> Straight for the creature, it extends as if the metal plating on its body is able to extend out, reaching for him, and then bites him in half. The man is dead. It then takes its tech second turn, and then shreds his lower half as it throws it into the area in the middle of this town square. The next creature then moves straight towards the next merchant. However, she's a little more prepared. As it aims straight for her, from what you can tell, she steps into one zone too far and literally appears out of nowhere to the north. Disappears and reappears. So it completely misses. If you had to guess, she has magic. But she probably doesn't have a lot. Maria. Maria's going to say to Evie that they need to try and get the horses away as well. Sure, we should just be sat around. I don't know what you're... <laughs> I'm looking to the body on the floor. <laughs> it is gooey. There it is, going to move and try and quickly go around the car to see if there's anything sort of like locking it in place. It doesn't seem to be locked in place. It does have like a um, wooden block underneath it to stop the wheels from moving. Other than that, it's not like a fancy cart. Okay. She's simply going to move that and try and guide the horses away. All right, you easily move it. And as you try to guide the horses away, the creature you assume is a basilisk gets a tackle opportunity on the horses. <laughs> yeah, that hits. And bites one of the horses' head off. Then begins to eat it. I can now see the sea. <laughs> this works in my favor. Yeah. However, luckily enough, as it's eating the now dead horse, you're able to re unhinge and unhook the other horse. And they just tell it to run away and never look back. Oh, no, she's keeping it with her. Oh. Um, she, owns, she owns these horses in this car. And she's now going to claim lawsuits for one of them dying in the city on their watch. Okay. I'm going to look up a horse real quick, but is there anything else you're doing? Other than guiding it away and trying to keep Evie with her and away from them. Not really. So you disconnected it from the cart, or...? Yeah. She would have had to. The horse is with you now. It's at your side. Um, ignore these horses, because those horses don't exist anymore. One's dead, and the other one's now brown. I'll give you control of the token. Da -da 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 -da. But anything else? Nope, that's it. Okay, you now have control. I suppose I'll just move my remaining however many feet up this way. Okay. At this point, before e Evie takes her next turn, uh, you see a f flying horse aiming straight towards you. <laughs> God damn it. She wasn't Listen, that far Dane out. Knight was already fucked by a giant snake. Don't blame us. Uh, Caitlin, you smell blood and a lot of it. Mostly horse. You're muted, by the way. There would be uh, some suspicious steam coming out of this, this helmet right now. <laughs> Go ahead and roll turn order. Oh, that's pretty good. 
Evie, it's your turn. Uh, fucking... Is this one here looking towards any... Who it's could not... possibly attack? You can't tell its own head is guarded by the steel, whatever this thing is. It's just eating the other half of the person that it threw out at the moment. It looked like it's nearly finished with that body. Yes. <laughs> Such a terrible phrase. Okay. You gonna finish that? <laughs> Caitlin says in game. <laughs> no, that's not the accent. Apologies, Maria. But I gotta keep casualties down. I can just do this. I cast banishment on it. Ooh. It is not charismatic. In fact, it has a negative one to it. It can definitely de fail, hopefully. But it it's a native. It actually may be best. The other thing is, it's a native of this plane, so it only lasts a minute. You don't know that. Um. Does 18 pass? But it's also not banished to the plane. Initially, it's banished to a demi plane. For a minute. Yeah, and then afterwards it'll be back. But that still deals with one creature completely gone from battle. Pass. But with an 18. Okay. Pass. You aim your magic straight towards it. It hits the metal hide. And it just deflects off and um, makes the dead body on the ground disappear. Crying out loud. Uh, I gotta see if this is a fucking thing or not. And to transform, god damn it. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I use bonus action to cast a spiritual weapon. Cool. So. Solid choice, solid choice. Eleven to hit. As you aim your blade straight towards it, it hits the creature, but the metal hide seems to be quite strong. It doesn't even pierce the first layer. Okay, you still have a regular action. You can cast a cantrip or do an attack. I cast banishment, which is an action. It missed. Ooh, well then, unfortunately, you can only cast one spell a turn. Yep. You can cast a spell and a cantrip. You can move two spells. Or uh... something else. Up to you. Just gonna move back and keep telling everyone to get away. Okay. Do, do, do. Caitlin. Having a good time. <laughs> this is Aren't you bad. glad you came back from the storm? <laughs> <laughs> That's enough. Stop moving up, ready. I'm going to, like, get off the horse. Finally. You get off the horse. Oh, God. What is what is this scene that I see? I see, like, nothing. I see Evie, I see a horse, and I see Maria. You also feel something on the ground Which... that's not moving, but it's like a wave of water just moving on the surface of the ground. Scent of blood. Scent of blood. When you Forget also that. hear... A basilisk like creature gnawing at a horse and a horrific grinding sound of metal on metal as this dog thing moved about. Yeah, there's that. It's okay. I passed. Okay, you don't go into a blood frenzy. I'm going to take out a wand. And I'm going to cast banishment at fourth level. I mean fifth level. I'm sure. 
I need a, a charisma save from this one and Bye. that one. Cool. They both have negative ones because they are not pretty creatures. Yeah, they need nat 20s. One of them almost got Maybe it. Season. Yeah, so close. They both banish as they move and look as if they're aiming straight towards you which is a little scary they quickly lunge straight towards you but they both get banished out for at least a minute one, Give, yeah, one, two, giving this police officer who's uh, just a randy and Byroth time to get in there hey Hey, look, gonna... there's a reason we gave you that, uh, that lust chart. <laughs> you can just banish whatever you want now. You can just, like, maybe not 20s. Yeah. That's because they had a minus one time of DC's 19. <laughs> I, I got... gave you the lust blade as I had to make you sign a contract to get the blade. And... <laughs> I'm going to use my action to get a spell slot back, so. Okay. Uh, Byroth, go ahead and roll your turn order, but right now we're... Uh, out of turn order. Cool. Maximilian's um, gonna fly up 30 feet in the air. Okay. Uh, the police officer that was called over looks straight towards the rest of you. Oh, you did it, thank goodness. Ah, well, it looks like my job's here is done. Uh, is, if one of you can follow me to the police station so we can get a statement ready. They might like, be what back. this happening here? But I heard screaming and some uh, hissing. And... Well, but I think it is that I just recently tried to cast on them. They're gonna be back in a short period of time. Are we technically still in initiative? Yes, but no one's currently acting on it just yet. Okay, well, as soon as Maria gets a chance, she's moving the horse away so she can pen it up somewhere else. Oh yeah, you can easily do that. Um, you pin it over towards an area that, if they come back, they won't be able to get super easily. They'll have to get through you, Horse, Evie, this Randy police officer, Caitlin, Byroth, and like a few NPC characters that might mm -hmm. just have to eat. Um, the Randy's, After that, the Randy's officer's she's... name's Daryl, by yeah. the way. Go ahead. Uh, after that, she's detaching the carcass of the horse, and she's trying to move the cart away. Um, roll constitution save. Really isn't gonna go well for her. Could it be a strength instead? <laughs> no, you can move it. That's not an issue. But the smell. Oh, Arth is very surprised by the fact that you can just tug this horse. I can argue against what I think you're leaning towards the dogma with her backstory. Hmm. Now Maybe. go ahead and roll a. It'd probably be a wisdom save. Ah, two things I'm perfecting. <laughs> it's a good thing Caitlin killed it. Uh, Maria, you're fine. For a second there, you felt like you were going back to something, but you quickly waved that off. Caitlin, rolled you war wisdom save for? Bloodlust. Okay, you immediately dive towards the body of the dead horse and begin to drink its blood. Oh. It's gross. Alright, that's good. Oh, B uh, BT dubs, though. Um, The creatures Look. are back now, though. Not just yet. Byroth, Evie, is there anything you're doing? Um, I'm if... trying to escort everyone out, like, physically shooing them away from this situation. Ooh, good call. And Byroth? Yeah, if Caitlyn seems like she's going blood frenzy mode, I'm going to cast command on her, and I'm going to say... Um, I'm going to command her, and I'm going to say the single word, restraint. In terms of, like, she needs to restrain herself. Is man to charisma Let's... saving for No, it's a wisdom saving for It's a wisdom save. Okay. And my DC is 16. Uh, Caitlin, go ahead and... Okay. Curses. Caitlin, you hear this? Up to you to decide. You passed it, but you can clearly tell that you're kind of being a little vampiric right now. I'm going to do another wisdom save then. 
I mean, you don't have to. You've already drinking the blood. You're good. <laughs> but you rolled a 20, it's, so you're still it, good. It's because of the amount of blood that's around. Not 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 because he uh, exactly drank the blood. Oh, yeah, that's it's true. because there's like a ton of blood around her. You drink a lot. I mean, you drink a lot, I mean, but there's it's still. It's not a lot. like Byroth is disgusted by it. He's eaten horse before. He's just like, strain yourself. <laughs> the but... one that cares about the civilians. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, Byroth. BT does while Kaylin's in her uh, her state. Roll me a con save. Okay. Oh dear. I'm sure you'll Great. pass. Oh my you God. didn't pass. Welcome to the family. To, you're gonna try and freaking seduce me, you monster? I don't have to. I'm, I'm, I'm not doing anything. You look. You look. You look towards my red glowing eyes uh, in my in my vampiric state. Caitlin, you'd be looking down, consuming. That's different what? than staring into your soul. <laughs> look into my eyes. See oh. the sins of the, the ones you committed. But he did say something to her, right? Yes, but he he I said a single word. Her. Yeah, it's all about that noise. Her. It wouldn't cause. Uh, it wouldn't cause this, Caitlin. I'm afraid. But he already failed it. I'm sorry, but the way it was worded and the way you guys were positioned, it wouldn't you have worked. You failed to way. look up. You failed to do what I said. You ignored me. You yeah. were just eating that horse. Sorry, bud. There I will do, be other times. <laughs> I do like the idea, but we'll work on it later on. These creatures now come back, though. And it's now their turn. Because they gave everyone a chance to take their own actions. The creature, now looking around for any type of blood, any sustenance, realizes that a lot of the blood has now been wiped away. Uh, Maria taking care of the wagon, and then Caitlin taking care of the mess. Uh, let me roll something. Yeah, that's what I'm here for, to get rid of the blood. Yeah, that's Byron what I thought. Byron is fucking fascinated to see a creature of metal appear out of nowhere, because everyone refused to tell him about it. <laughs> everyone oh. was busy with the fucking creatures right in front of them. Um, I said they'll be back, and then I think some come to bloodlust. Yes. Um, Daryl, the... NPC uh, police officers told you the entire story. Uh, there's apparently a basilisk and a... I don't know what that creature is. I just gave a general description of it. It's plated in armor. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Then you see it appear out of nowhere. You also see then a half-dead body appear out of nowhere. So the creature looking towards the dead body, or at least you feel that it's looking towards the dead body, looks at the next viable target which is unfortunately Eevee oh great it rushes through your spiritual Joy. weapon um, I don't think spiritual weapons get attack opportunities so it just rushes through it it's not smart so it will probably take a d4 4 points of damage as it literally pierces through and goes straight towards you and it lunges straight towards you Let's see, first has to hit, plus seven. Uh, does a 24 hit? 24? Yeah, that hits. It Basic. jumps in the air. You have to... Hit your body yeah. as it does a body slam. You're still going to hit with the damage, but go ahead and roll a strength saving throw to not be pinned down. That also question. Mm -hmm. uh, I storm beat up because I did take my uh, spear out. Oh, that's a good point. Okay, I'll give it disadvantage. Does a 20 hit? Just <laughs> kill me. Okay, it binds through the shield of ice. It hits you for plus its strength. 14 points of damage. Go ahead and roll a strength saving throw to not be pinned underneath in this massive form. You just wiggle your way out, just barely, if the DC was 18. As it bites you in the wing, as you wiggle out. 
the next creature looks straight towards the nearest target, which is Caitlyn. Ironically. Or a dead horse. And it looks you straight in the eyes. It will now have to roll a wisdom saving throw. And Caitlyn, you must now roll a wisdom saving throw. Uh-huh. It failed. Probably. Whose DC is it trying to fail? No. You beat its DC. It probably did not beat your DC. My DC is 18 because I put the wand away. Okay. Oh, wow. It just barely failed. Yeah. It does not move against you. That's what I thought. However, it gets two attacks. So it then moves straight towards Byroth. I would like to... Do I have my sword out? I don't think I drew it yet. I didn't draw it yet. Alright, good luck. <laughs> it yeah. already used its special move, so it can only attack with its razor-sharp teeth. It's plus five. Nope, that doesn't hit. With a nine... It lunges towards you, but your shield easily blocks it and deflects it away. Your turn. Fire off. Yeah. Alrighty. Um, I don't mind an opportunity attack at this point. I am going to... Okay, so this construct that I'm looking at. Do I think it looks dwarvish in nature? Elvish? The way Can the I metal just... is fused with its body, the way it's literally melded within, it's someone of high quality. It's someone of very known reputation. Or at least it has to be someone of... It has to be a master, from what you can tell. Someone that can actually feel the physical body and manipulate the metal to interact with it perfectly. That being said... This is something far beyond from what you know. The best guess you can tell are the dwarves or um, the dwarves from underneath in the Underdark. I forget their actual name. Is this like Drogon or something? Yeah, something like that. Um, okay. Based on how the face is also covered, you believe this creature might not have eyes underneath. So it's finding people through perhaps scent or um, some sort of tremor sense. Alright, I'm just gonna... I think I'm just gonna fuck the shit out of this automaton. Uh... Yeah. I'm gonna cast spiritual weapon and then I'm gonna throw my spear. And... Uh, as a feature of my Forge Cleric, when I hit a construct with an attack, I deal additional Forge damage equal to my Cleric level. Mm-hmm. So... Mm. Yeah. No, I'll do So... Shit. I if I do shit. Spiritual weapon, 26. I assume that is. So that'll be 6 plus I'm level 9, so that'll be 15. Mm -hmm. And then I'll throw 19 on my spear attack. That hit. 19 does hit. Oh, wait, sorry. 26 does hit. Yeah, 26 hits, and then 19, I throw my javelin, because it's a thrown weapon, it's like my rope javelin thing, it's really cool. Cool. The 19 to hit. It does hit. One fire team. <laughs> <laughs> the creature gets hit both by a magical attack and by <laughs> this weird wiggling oh, javelin. My the uh the second attack also is plus nine because it's a construct mm -hmm. the creature gets struck by this by fire by piercing damage and by whatever the heck metal you're using 
it writhes in pain more so than you thought. It looks extremely mad at you. You feel that you are its main target now. Good. Fucking you deal damage to him. I'm close to death. <laughs> You're a life cleric. You can hear yourself. I shout at the construct in Dwarvish. Leave this place or I will be the doom of you. It hisses at you as if it's speaking directly at you. Um, I assume you can't speak with animals? No, but animals can fully understand me. I cannot speak with them in return. It's saying something? I speak dwarven. You know it can understand you. That's all you really know. Yeah. So it knows that I'll kill it if it stays here. It does not move from what you can tell. Maria. Um, alright, let's see. What is it to feed someone the potion? If they're still awake, bonus action. If they're asleep, your action. If it's something else in the actual rules, I don't want to hear it. I think there's actual rules for it, to be honest. I mean, it makes the most sense. Mm. That's 30. Okay. Rip my flying speed if it bit my no. fucking wing. Right. Action two, or bonus action doesn't really matter. One of them to dash for a little bit extra, and then I will use my opposite action to grant EV advantage on her next attack with the help action. Cool. Anything else? That'll be my turn. Okay. Rando Daryl's turn. Looking at Byroth, looking at Eevee, he looks towards Byroth. Do you have this? No, I think we... Alright, good. Then rushes towards Eevee's battle. He take out, takes out two blue blades, draws them out, and literally jumps on top of this creature. He... Uh, what's it called when you do a flip in the air? Somersault? Nah, that doesn't sound right. Yep. Front flip. Oh, yeah. He does a backflip straight onto the top of the creature. <laughs> and then buries the blades on where you assumed the eyes would be. It punctures through the metal and you feel an electrical bolt through the blades. Well, Evie feels this as the air itself feels like electric. The body then convulses for a second. It doesn't die, but it is heavily wounded now. He then does another backflip, getting behind it. Uh, this is what he was going to do. Um, but Eevee has like super advantage on their next attack as he gives Eevee the flank option. That being said, you can't stack advantages. I activate my angel form. Or you time. could heal yourself. Oh no, she's pissed. She wants to kill this thing. Oh, mess it up. You already got your spiritual weapon out. Mm. So spiritual weapon and then whatever nuke spell you want. Mm -hmm. I'm activating my angel form, which means my eyes go fucking sorry, white. Radiant. No, just kidding. Flanking from behind and fucking stabbing it with the spear with advantage. If that costs a bonus, then you can't use spiritual. Mm -hmm. Yep. Ooh, where's the spear? Fucking damn it. 
Okay. A 14 doesn't hit, unfortunately. Anything else? I just look pissed. My wing is bleeding. I look angry. Okay. As this occurs, you then well. feel a strange sensation on your body. You see Daryl hold the hand up, and you see a pocket watch. You then get placed in the exact... Oops, something just opened up. Filter keys, blah, blah, blah. Shift key, eight seconds, whatever. You then are right back in the Zach's position you were 30 seconds ago. Uh, six seconds ago. Uh, to everyone else, it's as if Eevee hasn't done anything yet. It's your go again, Eevee. <laughs> oh, fuck it, I'm still pissed off. <laughs> Let's go. Sixteen does hit. Barely though. And this time you would have your bonus action. You slash into the creature with your spear. It hurts it and it's near death's door, but it is not dead just yet. Yeah, the blade. The blade swings straight towards the body, but it just moves out of the way, just barely. Anything else? I'm gonna assume now. Bless you. <laughs> Caitlin. Um, Caitlin's gonna move down here. Caitlin's not done with this one yet. Caitlin's okay. gonna make a new pet. You can try. I'm gonna force it. I'm gonna force it to look into my eyes. Okay. Currently, right now, it's at the point it doesn't really have that much of a mind, so I had to fail multiple times. So it that's sense, okay. It senses you. I assume like you poke it, so it looks directly at you again. Um, it will take its legendary action to try to turn you to stone again. Uh, wisdom versus wisdom. Yeah, mm -hmm. I failed. All right. Now do a con save. <laughs> Damn it. I'll have to beat it then. Okay. Just a whole bunch of ass whooping. Right now, it's still... It doesn't seem like it wants to hurt you, but it's not going to listen to you just yet. Okay. How I'm going to say in deep speech, because why not? I, and I'm going to say, you will be mine. It doesn't know deep speech, but it seems to have heard you. Um, eh. Good. Bonus action, Hexblade's Curse on it. Okay. Caitlin, I know you're blind, but traditionally looking right at Basilisk Eye is bad idea. The horse is going to come down and do a, one of those uh, pro gamer moves. The horse is dead. My horse. Oh. I had oh. it fly 30 feet up in the air, remember? Okay. It is now 30 feet up in the air. Again. I'm going to have it come down and save Evie's life. Okay. Because it's a, it's a, it's a nice, it's a, it's good. It's a nice person. It helps those in need. It's going to come up and kick it. It's gonna come up and, you know, just kick some dirt kick on the shoes. real good. Next turn. It kicks yeah. through the air and just hits air. It's gonna uh, run away because now it's embarrassed. <laughs> Inside your mind, you go, Oh, well, well done! Oh, such beauty, such grace. I know where it gets it. Next level, going barbarian. I'm going, I'm taking my barbarian rage. <laughs> <laughs> I accidentally clicked over it, but it is the metal creature's turn. Let's see. 
it is super mad, mostly at Daryl, but it kind of... Actually, it has to roll something now. Oh yeah, it failed, so it's gonna go through a frenzy. You see the metal then turn into spikes. It is just super pissed off. You're not sure, but then it rushes straight towards Eevee. Eevee, go ahead and make a dexterity saving throw. Oh, great. <laughs> I am so great at that. <laughs> I dex. As a fully spiked body just rushes straight towards... Oh, nice! Why? I can't <laughs> hit it, but my oh, dex is great! No. Straight Look through you. However, you jump in the air and you use your wings to fly to stay up. You take no damage as it turns around and does it again. However, you're in the air, so you, it completely misses you. But now it goes straight towards Daryl. Daryl, no! I'm not going to show you Darryl, his yes. <laughs> uh, modifier. But he rolled but a I two, so it doesn't Ooh. matter. So he just gets hit with a ton of bricks and spikes of metal. He hits the ground hard. He's now prone. Not dead, but he is Seriously? prone. Uh, does Eevee get an attack of opportunity? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to ask, because I was just going to drop on top of it with my spear and try and stab it. Oh, good call. It still hits Daryl, but you can perhaps kill it. I still have advantage. Yes, technically, because Maria's still there. That hits, and how do you want to kill it? Because it was at nine. Just dropping down and I'm sparing it through the head. <laughs> you see that Daryl, your close companion, gets hit and falls into the ground, bleeding heavily. You don't know how to feel, but it's a person that got hurt. So you lunge straight at the creature and spike it through the head, probably, as it falls down to the ground. Do you kill it or just incapacitate it? Uh, can I incapacitate it? Because it technically is our fucking beast. As it falls down to the ground, it's unconscious. <laughs> okay, the Basilisk turn. Aiming straight towards Byroth, because it can't attack Caitlyn just yet, unless it makes its wisdom saving throw again. It now... Which pro tip, Byroth has been facing away from the Basilisk. Good call. However... He's been attacking the doggo. <laughs> Let's see. You guys have been able to deflect it, so it'll go towards another creature. Nah, come to me. Fight me. One and two, <laughs> it'll go towards Maria. Three and four, it'll go towards your horse. No, 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 Maximilian. It goes towards Maria, giving Caitlyn, Byroth, and Dark Pegasus an attack of opportunity. Dark Pegasus time to show. <laughs> Alright, um, Byroth can use spells as attacks of opportunity. So he's going to cast command on the creature and say, um, Grovel, because that's a fucking dope one. Okay, what's the save? DC Wisdom 16. Wisdom. It's, it's closest best attribute outside of Constitution. It stops right before it even gets close to Pegasus, as it gets hit in the head. Um, Caitlyn, I don't think hits, but your Pegasus does. It, Caitlyn doesn't even have a sword out. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, that's true. It then just grovels in front of Byroth, and then just flees out of here. You Actually, see it's heading towards the forest. They have to spend their whole turn groveling, even if they get hit. No, okay. It, I think so. I, uh, when it, I'll just post it. Okay. I mean, it was going to take its action to grovel and then use its movement to rush out into the forest. <laughs> then I won't be able to keep it. Uh -huh. Choose a creature, blah, blah, blah. Wisdom saving throw, fail, one word command. You spell the fail, creature in the dead. Language of obeying the Dang command it. harm if they follow command. You may use a single word and damn feels appropriate Should command. Just the whole thing. Hang on. I didn't post the grovel. Hang on. Yeah. 
Oh, okay. Um, it just hits the ground, much like Daryl. <laughs> Poor Daryl. It is now Byron's turn. Uh, you have oppor not an opportunity attack. What's it called? Advantage? Yeah, 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 that thing. Yeah, I guess I'm just going to try and kill the Medusa. I'll make my regular old attack. Um, with advantage, I guess. Because that's better. Mm -hmm. It's prone, right? It is prone. Advantage. Yep, I see that hits. Nice. Uh... So mm -hmm. that's 18 against the whatchamacallit. The creature takes a substantial amount of damage. It's not ne near as good as it used to be. It is bleeding heavily. Two good hits will likely take it down. But two good hits. Anything else? Mm -hmm. I command my spiritual weapon to hit the construct again. Uh, the creature made out of iron is currently unconscious on the ground. If you attack it now, it will right. die. If it's unconscious, then I'll move it over and I'll hit this jabroni. So it's directly on top of it. Ooh, a 12. It has opportunity. But it's ad advantage, sorry. Advantage, sorry. So I'll just roll it again. Even worse. You slash through the air, but it just misses its head. That's a lot of damage. Kill my fucking pet. <laughs> oh, Maria's turn. If there's nothing else, Byroth, it is Maria's turn. Yeah, I'm done. Is the done. Basilisk one dead or? The Basilisk is still alive, but it's heavily bleeding. The iron horse, whatever it is, not dead, so but it's not moving. Yeah. Maria's going to come over and try and stabilize it. Um, it's still, it's still alive one. and up and fighting. I thought it was down as an unconscious. It Iron is probably... dog unconscious. Oh, okay. Maybe not well, stabilized. I have no idea where I was. Hey, uh, click on your token and click X. I got you. No, really. Didn't help. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, I, I mean, I, I actually, <laughs> this move doesn't help. Uh, X just shows me that last turn. <laughs> Rip. Okay, I... Uh, I was around here somewhere, I think. You were there. And then you wanted to stabilize the unconscious one, so I moved you here. And then I could uh, shift to move everyone If there. it was non-lethal, isn't it automatically stabilized? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I don't need to stabilize that one. Okay. Which means... Uh, I don't know if my plan... I don't really know if I can do what I wanted to originally do now. Uh, no, yeah, she'll go over here and she'll just medicine check her new pet. <laughs> right now my screen is just a mess of purple arrows. Okay, and please. You can tell that it is stabilized. It's not going to die, but um, in, in your own mind, you want this as a pet. So you do need... Really some... owns it. <laughs> so you do need some animal handling proficiency for god's sake employ byrods hell this is like <laughs> employ the person who she thinks is going to kill her or her mistress great employ idea. the person who can talk to animals and understands you metal don't know that. for god's sake people you, don't know you can talk to animals work with us <laughs> all right welcome with the information i have or prepare for Byroth to steal your animal because he can converse with it better than you can. Yeah, I think. Be my guest. Yeah, I'm pretty Please sure. Do. I'm pretty sure Ramon's gonna give you someone to work things out. Uh, anyways, Daryl gets up, wasting half of his movement. He looks towards you guys, nods as if indicating that you have this. Rushes towards the other creature, which is barely in his movement range. Jumps into the air and just kicks it in the head. 
its entire form just wavers to the side. It was a very good kick. Not enough to kill it, but definitely enough to crack a skull. Amy. No, oh, my snake. He's flying over to Daryl and doing fourth level yeah, cure wounds on him. Okay. You heal him, he's at half health now, probably. I mean, uh, well, he got an extra f eight on top because of my uh, extra healing. Okay. Life higher. Let's see. Nor the radiant. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, he's above half health now. That's good. He looks towards you, nods. Thanks. So Evie's limp flying because her one wing is just completely bloody. Um, but you might want to take care of yourself as well. Then he hands you a violet potion. Uh, While well, the creature bit down into her wing when it pinned her down for the few seconds. So I don't know how much blood that is. It's not enough to cause Caitlyn to go blood frenzy but it is enough to it's not pretty um Daryl hands you a violet potion do you drink it or just hold on to it up to you drink it fuck it it immediately knits back the damage that you've sustained and he owes you for 15 nice but the scar the definite scar that would have been there it's completely sealed up and wound as if it never happened. Hey, we can fly properly now. <laughs> I mean, the blood mark's uh, still there, but you can wash that out. Yeah. You don't need to. <laughs> For this action to move my spiritual weapon and attack if I've used kill wounds. I think so you can only move for it. It's only for casting. Yeah. You can move your spiritual weapon to uh, snuff. Can only move it 20 feet, so. Uh, I'll just say it's close enough. I mean, it's a pretty big weapon from what I remember. Oh. Uh. It's literally a long sword. Oh. Uh, you elegant can move it up. You golden can move it over here. long sword. Alright, it's just barely close enough. This thing's considered a large creature. So it's just barely within range. We'll try to look for the fucking spell. Hang on. To do. That does hit. 12, 11, 4, 26. Oh, just barely. It lunges, spikes into the creature. It is near death's door. It hisses straight at you. You feel that it's going to lunge at you. Anything I'm just else? in the air, like, come at me! <laughs> Alright. Caitlin. Which way is it looking? Uh, currently at Eevee. It appears to be its next target. You blind fool. Close your eyes. It doesn't matter. Hey. I'm showing dominance over this creature, and I will make it mine through the, through my sheer chutzpah and luck of the dice roll. How about you just close down your visor that doesn't have any eye slots and kill it? How about I just go ahead and roll an athletics check to make it look at me? So you're trying to grapple it to force its head to look at you? I'm going to kick it like twice or maybe once to make it look at me. Like, hey, over here. Hmm. Yeah, go ahead and roll a... Athletics. That's pretty good. Let's roll... Perception? It's really pissed off that Eevee almost killed it. So it will have advantage. But it is not that perceptive. Oh wait, it is perceptive. But it's only a plus two. Wow, both 15s. It then looks at you mindlessly. Huh. Roll a con save. It'll fail eventually. Con plus five. Oh, 11. Yes! 
I'm so happy with your body. It's just staring at you. It doesn't do anything on its turn. It's now Byroth's turn. Can I give it an order as a bonus action or something? Depends on what. Sleep. I mean, uh, close your eyes. Like it closed shut your its eyes. eyes. Uh, Byroth, your turn. Oh dear, is it clear to Byroth that it is under Caitlin's sway? It's been less I mean, than it... six seconds. You can't honestly say. So the iron construct is unconscious. It's unconscious and currently being medically treated. And the terrible basilisk is... Near death's door, and it currently has its eyes closed. Can Barra tell if it's under Caitlyn's sway? Go ahead and roll insight, but it has to be pretty high because Caitlyn usually wants to keep this type of trait hidden. There is a tell, but the problem is she's wearing her helmet, so the tell is a lot harder to say. 14, decide. not high. 14. Um, Caitlyn, what's your spell save? <laughs> not that low. Okay. Um, by all, you can't tell. I mean, yeah, spell save for it. the uh, for the uh, for the eye thing. No, spell safe in general. Oh, then, no, it's 18. I don't, I don't, I don't have my wand out yeah. right now. Uh, Byroth, you can't tell. As far as you know, it's slowly losing consciousness due to the blood loss. But then Byroth wants to finish that off. Okay. You would have advantage because it's prone, and even if it wasn't prone, it has its eyes closed, so you would have advantage. Advantage. That does hit. And no matter what you hit it with, it was at two. Mm -hmm. So how do you want to take it down? <clears throat> Honestly, ever since you gave uh, this like javelin snake spear the wind blades I've, or the wind like shield thing, I've been thinking of it as a really anime like the spear itself is like this metal rope that is kind of fire off the anime thing and like writhing writhing windshield and then straight and immediately into like ah, okay the thing is though do you kill it or just knock it down mm. okay i'll make um yeah this area that we're in right now uh, Byroth is... No one's around. If you do violent damage... I want to make an insight check into general as... Okay, I want to make an insight check as to... Why the fuck is there a basilisk in the middle of town where it should not be? Like, this Byroth knows that's totally inappropriate. Okay. Well, you saw Evie move, move away a car. You see the remnants of a cage. Go ahead and roll insight anyways. Up to you. I don't know, like, like, why would... Um, oh, I still have an advantage on. Oops. From what you can tell, you don't know. There's a broken cage, there's a broken wagon, there's a dead horse. If you had to guess, someone brought it in, or someone teleported it in and tried to make it a circus creature. The wagon should be relatively fine. Oh, yeah. The wagon's fine, it's just covered in a little blood. It's fine. Um, but there's still a dead horse. Either someone was keeping it here as a pet turning it, training it to be in the circus, or someone was poaching the creature. Maybe it's a violent creature that they were trying to sell, or maybe it's a act in the circus that got loose and is now killing people in town. Um, case in the point, the half-dead body in the middle of town. Hmm. Does Barath happen to know if basilisks are like an untamable species? If this is just like a stupid thing to do. It's potentially tameable, but unless you're trained with handling creatures, even if you can speak with them, that's not trained with handling creatures. So potentially possible. But these creatures have 
um, are violent. You can tell that, at least for now. I don't have to kill it. Yeah. So immediately, you bring out your spear. You make it a tempest, as if it's becoming a tornado around you. You fling it straight at the creature. It spins in the air, causing a vacuum-like structure of nothingness as no sound emanates the body. And then it just hits and pierces the creature before it even actually hits it with the metal. As the wind circulated around, it just burrows through the skin. And then it bores a hole through it, and it falls to the ground dead. Question. Do I have to make a save if there's a tornado and I'm right next to him? No, it was <laughs> just enemy favorite. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Can I roll medicine to attempt to stabilize? Um. Do you have necromancy? I have a necromancy spell. <laughs> um. If you waste the spell, you could potentially keep it stable. Technically, I have raised dead, but that costs a lot of money. <laughs> I'll spend the 5th level spell slot to keep it stable. Okay. You knit the meat back together. It's breathing, but you're not exactly sure if it has a mind anymore. Fire up have to immediately like, what are you doing? This is a dangerous beast. It's not this sort Wisdom of saving throw. Flee. From me to me? Yeah. Okay, as you do that, Daryl looks like your team, or it looks that your team is fighting each other and cancels out the spell. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing. I have counter spell arm. <laughs> it's true, um, but Daryl already did it at level six. Uh, Caitlin, does that. Beat command? Uh, command would be cast a level 5 spell, yeah. Oh, okay. So it just completely shatters your spell. He looks at you, wondering why you're commanding your teammate. Uh, then goes, um, not for nothing, but you guys clearly need to talk out your differences. Like, come together and speak with each other. Whatever's going on, communication is... Something you all ought to do. No offense, miss, but, as he looks at Caitlin, but you all have to work at a, as a team. I could not agree more. Not but for to them, not us, as I fly over to Maria and check if she's alright. Uh, Dogma, whilst all that's been going on over there, could Maria be on her walkie talkie thing to Ramon? Yeah. Um, as E.B. heads out, though, um, Daryl then states, That includes you too, miss. It seems that this entire party was split up into three camps. That miss over there, this man, and then you two. Not for nothing, but this isn't exactly a team. As Maria uh, then, during this time, has been communicating with Ramon. Maria is simply asking Ramon if there's a way of bringing some chains that can, or some bindings that can stop dangerous creatures. Uh, yes. As she's now in possession of two of them. Of course, we'll bring in a hazmat team. Um, dead or alive? I should say alive, and she wants to keep them that way, seeing as she now owns them. No, he meant as if, are they dead or are they alive? Um, it doesn't matter they're alive. You said it correctly anyways. Um, all right, I'll bring in a specialized team to make sure they continue to be stabilized. So you would thank him and turn off the walkie-talkie again. All right. Um, he then states, they'll be in section nine when you're... And then it cuts off. All right. Dun, dun, dun. A few moments later, you do hear people rushing over. Uh, Daryl then looks at the rest of you. Well, if you don't mind, I need to get back to my patrol. You're a good man, then. Wise. Just... I'm not saying... 
don't have your own issues, but if you're working, if you're gonna work as a team, actually work as a team. Uh, anyway, see you guys later. He okay, puts something down you on this table. He nods at you, and then just heads off screen. Yeah, well, if nobody fire the what, what's on the table? What's on the table, man? Okay, as he rounds the corner, you head towards the table. You see that it is a department badge. Um, it's just a standard uh, police officer badge that can communicate. It has no real distinctive marks, so you can tell that it is a simple police officer's badge. But doesn't have, like, a ID number? It does. It has um, serial number 11011. Mm -hmm. An early model. Oops, I forgot to turn on my keyboard. 11011. Yeah. Then you hear. Oops, I forgot oh, to. Son actually... of a bitch. Did you figure it out? Sorry. Just that uh, if I fucking got rolled again. again. What? I don't know. I just thought that maybe some. Never mind. Like I said. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Section 9 members head into the area. Uh, both Red Eye and NPC have actually not interacted with head in then clover and npc you haven't interacted with head in as well they begin to set out what appeared to be strange metallic rods in between each creature then a f i believe this is the proper term a faraday electrical cage surrounds the creature and then electric not an electricity yeah. but okay and then these metal itself begins to tune to something as it lifts the creatures into the air, not actually harming them, but lifting him as if they're weightless. The two then grab the bars and begin to move them out. Uh, do you stop them? Follow them? These are actual section 9. Uh, yes, these are section 9 members. How long, how long has it been? Closer. Roughly five minutes. As they're like walking a... them away, no. Marie's just calling out, please be careful with them. Uh oh, Fire wants to know where they're taking the metal construct. Uh, section 9, we've been instructed to keep these uh, guys safe. Good, good, good. Clover then states, if you need them, they'll be there. I guess. Not really sure why you're asking. I'm interested in this sort of thing. Alright. Um, Red Island States, is there anything else you need? Nope. Alright. They then head out. You guys are basically have the market to yourselves. If you want to steal stuff, you probably could. If you want to head back to Section 9, you can. If you want to head out and have some tea, you can. Um, Evie, that body is dead. Even if you try to heal it, it's missing half of its torso. Oh, I'm not healing it. I'm not healing it. I'm just doing a prayer so it has a peaceful afterlife. Fair. <laughs> All right. Um, How long has it been since Caitlin scheduled that date? Um, since that point in time, an hour? So you still have like an hour left? 
Caitlin's gonna go get ready then. Okay. Uh, Maria, you unhinge your horse and you see a whole bunch of stuff. I just send you a message about that stuff. Oh, you easily do that. Oh, okay. As much as she can. I assumed. And then she's taking the horse back to the car and tying it to one side while she pushes the other side. Okay. You now have horse slash wagon. But I'm not going to depict the horse, uh, wagon. Too many tokens. That's fine. Okay. Essentially, Maria's stood in place of the other horse, so one horse isn't shouldering all the weight. Mm hmm. Which she really doesn't need to do, but she feels like she has to. And she's just going back over to wait for Evie. Okay. Um, while you're doing so, do you, like, um, ex look at anything else? Uh, read your comic book? Um, just... I will check the comic book to see if anything's changed on it from last time. You can tell that something has changed, but only slightly. You know that he was supposed to be here this mighty night. That hasn't changed, but five silhouettes mm. are in here now. Maria figured it out part way through. Yeah, I figured as much. Beyond this, however, something else has clicked into your mind. Not just yours, but all of yours. You were clearly all called out on your workmanship once amongst each other. Oh, also, Rauta was here too. She was just um, <laughs> doing stuff. He posed no clipping. Yeah. She was act. We have in character evidence that she was just playing her game. Yeah. She was slowly walking here, playing her game. <laughs> Anyways, you all were called out on your teamwork. What happens now? Well, up to you. Head out on your own, become a group of three again. Evie, Maria, Rauta, Byroth, and Caitlin with their horse. Whatever happens now, you guys clearly need some direction in your life as we end the session for today. <laughs>